So uh, I'm going to give you some tools today to start off with. Uh, there's a, a bunch I'm going to throw at you, and I want you to realize, too, that I don't want you to be overwhelmed by these things. Uh, I think for most of you guys, you probably won't be, but you know, for anybody that's, that's um, not really big in tech that might be listening to this today, you know, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by all of the things that are here. And I'll, <clears throat> well, I'll have a copy of the presentation also online for you uh, that you can be able to access so you can see all the links. You can go back into some of these different programs that I'm going to share. And, and since I'm really only going to touch on most of these programs for, for a couple of minutes or so, I'm not really going to have much of a chance to really delve into one or two of them other than to maybe talk about the, which, which ones that I use or which ones that you use that you've, had, uh, that you've found success with. So um, I'll say all that to say, too, you might have had experience with some of these tools, and if you do, I'd love for you to chime in and talk about your experience with them, what you like about them, what you don't like about them, um, and uh, you, you can even talk about what we can do to make them better in the type of environment that we have right now. So hopefully everybody sees my screen. Yes, no? I see it. Okay, good, good. Because um, I don't have it set up that I can, I don't have two monitors here, so I'm hoping everybody can see what we're doing. Uh, we are going to use a couple of these tools today, so just to give you some experience to see this both as a student or as an audience member, because some of these tools you can also use when you're presenting at a workshop, just like I'm doing today, uh, or a webinar. Uh, I'm going to ask you to go onto another device, onto your phone, use another tab, and go to pollev.com slash burrow. Uh, I was lucky that uh, I'm using the free version of this, but I was able to get my uh, uh, school's uh, name in there, so I have Willing Burrow, uh, Burrow for short. And uh, but nowadays, unless you pay for it, you have to they come up with the name a tag there for you. But if you can log into pollev.com/burrow, that allows you to be able to participate along with us today. So you won't just be listening, but I ask you to actually do something along with us. Uh, give me a second to do that. And as I'm uh, talking about some of these tools. I'm going to model this one. I'm also going to model a tool that I use called Pear Deck. Um, He's off. Everywhere I like a lot more in terms of presenting, but it's also great if you're working yeah, on you a level, secondary level. Uh, Pear Deck I use a lot more for working with um, uh, elementary through high school and in presenting and sharing that with our district teachers. But again, just want to give you a chance if you want to join in with us uh, to go to polleb.com slash borough. Let me know if you're having a hard time getting into that. Uh, and before we even start with this, I want to talk about some five, five tips that I use that I share with everybody, just in terms of thinking about ed tech tools. So before we even talk about these particular tools and formative assessment, just some things I want you to keep in mind. And um, if you are a leader of any type or you're doing workshops, you're helping other people with them, I want to encourage you to either use or modify these for, uh, for your benefit too, because these are some good reminders as we go into what could be the next two, three, more, four months of having to stay and work from home. Uh, so the first, always try out a new tool before you use it. And in fact, even though I've used Poll Everywhere and Pear Deck, I tried it out two or three times to make sure it worked before I presented today because I didn't want to have to um, go back and say, oh, I didn't, that didn't work today, and, and you not be able to see it. So always try it out before you use it. Uh, focus on one tool at a time. So I know a lot of teachers, when we first uh, went out and we were closed, Everybody started getting overwhelmed. We have all these tools that are free that we can use, and which one do we use? Um, you know what? I would always say, find one thing you think is going to work and start with focusing on that instead of trying to think about all these different tools you can use. Um, some of these tools, you can work together. You can use Google Classroom now with um, uh, Google Meet and with Pear Deck and with uh, a couple of the other programs. One of the programs we're going to get to actually integrates with Zoom. So. Uh, before you start focusing on how you can use all these programs together, think about how you can get that one program to work. Uh, I always say keep it simple, keep it simple silly. Um, I never like to, to use stupid, so I'll say keep it simple silly. Try not to do too much the first couple of times you use it, uh, because I think we have a tendency, especially if we get a little confident or cocky, to just throw out a tool and put all these uh, uh, fancy elaborate things together, and all of a sudden now our lesson actually kind of goes downhill because something doesn't work and it throws us off. Uh, keep the focus on the lesson and not the tech. And this is a really hard one because I think sometimes we want the tech to work so badly that we forget about the reason for this lesson. And sometimes the technology tool that you have isn't the best one to use for the lesson you want to teach. And last, be patient because you are bound to make mistakes. Even if you're good with technology, even if you're wonderful with it, you're going to have some mistakes that you're going to make. Uh, so I want to encourage you to be patient and know that 
You're just gonna have to kind of work through them if you're gonna get this to work. So those are, again, the five tips that I use that I share with teachers in my building in our district, and I try to remind them of this all the time. Um, uh, I think especially as we went into about week three or four, the last couple of weeks we did some, some uh, PD sessions and a lot of teachers from other schools that were joining our sessions were talking about how overwhelmed they were. And so this was just a good reminder for them, even though they think they already knew it, that they had to just go back and take a breath and, and slow down and realize that we don't have to try to do everything at once just because we're home. <clears throat> so with that being said, I'm going to ask you to log in uh, to poll everywhere, pollev.com slash borough. Where are you at? See a lot of you guys from North Jersey. And you can see where I am. That's me in Burlington County. Uh, one of the great things about this, this type of tool with Poll Everywhere and then some of these other tools I'm going to share is that you can actually be able to see everybody's responses, um, uh, whether it's live or whether you choose to share it or not. And it makes for a great discussion tool. So, you know, those of you, for instance, that are up, Bergen, Union, Hudson Counties, some of you guys are... Um, kind of like right in the thick of this hot spot. Um, you know, so I could easily branch off to a question about how things are going for you there. You know, do you have students that are anxious about online learning? Do you have um, students that are anxious about the world around them and not even worried about online learning? So we could have a lot of discussion just from being able to use um, uh, uh, some type of graphic like this or some type of question. You could branch off from this into using other questions. Uh, I think that's uh, Doug over there in Pennsylvania. Um, for a second, I thought I saw somebody out here in the ocean. I didn't know where they were, maybe Bermuda. But um, uh, hopefully, um, um, but it looks like a lot of you guys are up north that are joining us today. <clears throat> so um, we're going to get a couple more Poll Everywhere questions in a minute, but these are just some of the tools that are out there. Um, when I started actually researching and trying to be ready for today's uh, webinar, I realized there was a lot more of these that I'd never even heard of. Uh, AnswerPad, Glisser, um, I'd heard of Clickers, I had heard of Kahoot, um, uh, Slido I'd never heard of. So a lot of these that I hadn't really even heard of before I uh, realized that there's a lot of these out here and they all have different, um, uh, different positives and negatives with them. I'm gonna try to get into some of them today, but when you, uh, if you wanna take a look at this presentation afterwards, these are all links. So if you click on them, you can go directly to those websites and uh, check out what each one is about. Uh, but really, if we think about the types of formative assessment tools, rather than thinking about all the different ones that were out there, you can really boil it down to three of them. Interactive presentations, interactive video, and then quizzes and games. And I'm really going to focus on these first two here, and the reason for that is because um, these are going to work a lot more in terms of learning within a lesson, whereas the games, games and the quizzes you're going to really use afterwards. So uh, while Kahoot and... Um, uh, quizzes and soccer div, a lot of those are, are great tools. They're tools really for the end of a lesson. And you can still use them in formative assessment, uh, but I wanna, I'm going to spend the bulk of my time really hitting these first two. So a couple things to think about with uh, interactive presentations. Uh, a lot of these are integrated with Google Slides or PowerPoint, or you can create the slides and then upload them into the program, or you can create them in the program. Uh, you can ask a lot of different types of questions. So uh, just as you saw from the one before, you can do a drag and drop or you can draw. We're going to do a couple of those today just so you kind of see and can play with some of them. You can provide some feedback during or after a lesson. You can decide whether you want it to be anonymous and you don't want everybody to know who had what answer or whether you want to require them to log in. And that's going to be really important. And the last is also important. Do you want it to be synchronous or asynchronous? Do you want it to be live learning or do you want it to be learning that we're going to catch up, that you're going to assign out that students will do when they have a chance? Um, and I know there's been some discussion in terms of synchronous versus asynchronous. Even yesterday's webinar, there was talk about live video and some of the implications of that. So, so I'm not going to get into all that today, but think about what you want to use this for because you may want to use a different tool depending on what you do. Let's take that out. All right, so back on polleverywhere.com, polleev.com, and again, you can see at the top how you can respond. You can also join via text if you want to. Uh, just, so, just so you can see an example of a multiple choice, uh, just curious to know, what do you know about formative assessment? So I'll give you a chance to answer, answer that. Cool. 
And as you can see, because this is live, I'm going to change my answer real quick. And you can see the numbers changing simply because I'm changing my responses. <clears throat> so based off of that, uh, just looking at the numbers that I see here, you know, most of you guys have a really good idea of what formative assessment is. Uh, a couple of you guys might want some help with it. You know, those of you that say you want some help with formative assessment, here's a good chance for you to chime in. Is it more so that you want to know how to use these particular tools, or you just are still trying to grasp exactly how to use formative assessment in general? So I'm going to throw that as a question right now. Uh, anybody want to chime in with that? Whoever answered C? And if you're going to chime in, please make sure you unmute so I can hear you too. Hey, Philip, I wanted to just mention, um, I did chime in and say, yeah, I know all about formative assessment, but I could use help because I think there are other ways to assess that I might not be familiar with, particularly on the tools that you use. So yeah, I would love to know more about it, even though I feel like I understand it, I don't think that I know everything about it. All right, great. Uh, anybody else answer C or even B that want to talk a little bit about I don't have to, but just want you to chime in. I answered B <laughs> because most of the time I use it as a quiz, like a five question Google form at the end of the class, maybe almost an exit ticket as a quiz. And okay. try to introduce, again, you try to introduce things, they say three to four times, and then it, kids kind of learn it so that's just one technique but i know there's lots of other techniques so i don't know all about it i just feel that you know it works well if i don't do too many questions and do something small so they can manage it okay absolutely um and thank you for sharing that uh you know look and it looks uh for instance a lot of people really want to know more about tools um but just thinking about formative assessment in general and i'm going to go back now to my slide here um uh, you know, just the way that I stopped for a second to kind of ask people about what they were thinking, what was going through their head, or what their, um, uh, I could go a little differently and say, you know, what frustrations do you have with formative assessment? Or uh, I could easily bounce off of that and have a quick discussion now with the class. So if you're using this live, this gives you that chance to actually now get interact with the class that you have. Uh, and again, this is one tool of formative assessment. You're doing that instantly, doing that right away. Uh, and that's the key to making this successful, because you can throw out this question, but it really kind of means nothing to you guys. And since I'm not going to see uh, or, or talk to most of you guys again about this unless you reach out to me, uh, I'm not going to reach out and, and follow up with you necessarily. Um, so, you know, unless you say, say, Phil, hey, can I talk to you a little bit more about this? I'm, this is going to be the end of my presentation in, in about 45 minutes. So uh, by stopping for a second, getting your input now, I'm already thinking about, well, how do I want to modify the rest of what I'm going to say today to make this effective? And so when you're in the classroom, this gives you that chance to say, I see what everybody's saying. I see what they're thinking right now. And even if they don't chime up an answer, it gives me some idea of what I want to make sure I mention in the middle of a lesson. Um, you know, keeping in mind, too, you know, some of you guys right now, I don't see your answers, so I don't see who said C, who said D, um, and, and that plays to some importance here. Um, but thinking about, again, why do you throw out a question? And I'll talk a little bit about that more in a minute. Uh, one more question I'm going to throw out to you so you see another type of question you can have with this. What word or phrase comes to your mind when you hear formative assessment? <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a chance to answer that. You can use a word, you can use a phrase. What do you think of when, it, when you hear formative assessment? Evaluation. All right, evaluation. Uh, make, feel free to, to chime and put that in. And for those of you that are just joining, uh, I, I think a couple of you joined in the last few minutes, you can join and respond at polleb.com slash borough if you have another tab, another device you can use. Uh, and I'd love to get your feedback uh, via that program as well as uh, shouting out and chiming in during the during the webinar today. Uh, but as you can see, a lot of people saying data, feedback, understanding. I heard evaluation in there. Uh, retention, rapid. Rapid's a great word. Um, uh, quiz, actionable. A lot of great words in here. 
that help describe what formative assessment is. So thinking about now using this as a, a work lab, you can throw out, well, what do you know about this subject? What do you know about this person? Um, you know, if you're in an English class, what emotions do you think the writer is using when they're writing this essay? So you could throw out this type of question in a lot of different, uh, a lot of different ways. So I'm going to say there's a whole bunch of different um, apps that you can use to do this type of thing. I showed you Poll Everywhere. Again, I love Poll Everywhere for presentations. Makes it really easy to show out, to throw out at you guys. Um, uh, oops, I went too, a little too far. Uh, plus, you can also use a unique URL that makes it really easy to log in. You can do Q&A during the session if you want to. So if I set it up that you can ask questions in the middle of it, uh, that would work well. Now, since we're on Zoom, since we're doing this online, it's not so important right now. Um, uh, and it's very interactive with Google Slides and PowerPoint. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but there's a couple of different ones here. Uh, again, Pear Deck I thought was really good for, for uh, elementary through high school. Uh, Mentimeter, uh, which I had just learned about a couple of months ago. And I just learned about Glisser and Slido. I'm going to say I haven't really checked into Glisser a lot, but there seems to be a lot of great features in there that for those of you that are going to be presenting a lot in the future, it might be worth the cost of it um, because you can actually, for instance, the respondents in a, in a session can actually tweet out a slide and put a comment on it. And so now you have people that are interacting via social media right in the middle of your presentation. Um, they also had the Q&A, the unique URL. Um, uh, but the, the thing about Glisser, think about the cost of it. Glisser is a $1,500 one-time fee. So I'm going to be checking into that in the future. I might use that in future presentations. But um, even with the stimulus check that I hope is coming soon, uh, I'm not going to have the, the money to want to drop, drop $1,500 on, on a presentation tool, no matter how good it is. Uh, there, uh, there's the different costs for each one for Pear Deck and I think Slido. Um, right now, you can be able to access for for till the end of the year. I think for free. I know that for Pear Deck for sure. Um, and there's a freemium version with all the rest of these two, so you can do some of the basics, uh, do a presentation, kind of play with it a little bit, and do some basic questions, and so just kind of get the feel of it before you pluck any money down. Um, and I also think you to uh, want you to think about whether there's a, a pricing plan for your institution. Sorry, I'm going to go back one more. Didn't mean to click on that. Um, <clears throat> pricing plan for your institution because for those of you working in school districts or institutions that are not presenting on your own, um, you may want to talk about what your district is going to use. Find one tool that you like, and that way the district can cover the cost for everybody in your school. For my school, I think it's about 70 teachers, and uh, our site license, I think, for Pear Deck was going to be about 3000 for the year which is a lot cheaper than 150 bucks for a bunch of teachers. So um, that pricing plan might play a, a difference as to which one you want to go with, if they have one. Uh, one last poll I want to throw out just before we move on. Have you used any of these tools? And, and with this particular slide, you can only choose one. So if you, if you use more than one of these, just pick one that you use. I'd like to know which one you use and get some feedback. And by the way, if you don't see that uh, the new poll come up automatically and poll everywhere, all you have to do is refresh your browser. All right, so since I really don't know a lot about Slido, can somebody chime in a little bit about what you like about Slido and uh, some of the great features about that? I'd like to know about that in, in, uh, as opposed to Pear Deck and Poll Everywhere. Who's used Slido or who's used something that, that I didn't mention? I'd like to kind of just to know what those other tools are that are out there. Hey, Phil. Um, I've used in Schoology, there is a pool built into Schoology. And so I've used, that's the only one that I, that I have used. Okay. Um, do they, what types of questions can you ask that way? Really just basic, it's just um, uh, the, the type of like a multiple choice sort of thing. So is it this or that, that type of thing. So you, you post up your question and the students vote. So it's just okay. a basic voting sort of poll. And can you do that live or, or do you throw that out as a, a remote lesson they can do when they want to? Uh, both. Okay. Uh, and again, I think it's key to know which, is, uh, which you have that you use. 
uh, and, and uh, which program you have and what, what you can do with it. So something like Slido, the, the, I'm sorry, um, uh, with uh, Schoology, you know, you have that information already in your LMS. You can be able to utilize it. Um, I think you can grade through Schoology as well, right? Yes. You wouldn't so you have the easy Google. access. So, um, you know, kind of similar what you would do with Google Forms and Google Classroom. Um, uh, but if you wanted to throw something else out and say, hey, I want to uh, throw out other types of questions or see whether you really paid attention to this, um, that's where you may want to consider whether you want to add in something else other than that. Um, but you also don't want to jump in and throw a new tool out just for the sake of it. A couple tips about uh, using interactive presentations in general. Uh, this is just what I found from my experience. Have a reason for each question. So uh, as we've gone through each question, I wanted to throw out um, and try to bring some discussion into this. I didn't want to make this just about you know, what I know, but I know there's a lot of collective experience within all the people that are here watching today. Um, so I wanted to kind of build on that experience and get your input, get you to talk about what, you, um, you know, what your experience is, what you like about it, what you wanted to know. Um, so I have a reason for each of the questions that I put in. I didn't put a question in just because I wanted to get an answer. Uh, no one advance which program will work best. Uh, so that's why I said like for, for me, when I work with students, when I'm within school, Pear Deck works really well because they can easily log in and they already have the access. Um, I use Poll Everywhere a lot more for other presentations. I'm looking at other, other uh, programs I might use, but I know which works best for me. So once you try, to, once you experiment with the different programs that are there, figure out which one you like, and then know which one's going to work best for you based on your setting. Uh, thinking about a couple of these questions in mind too, is the learning going to be synchronous or asynchronous, meaning is it live, or are you recording it, or are you uh, throwing this out for them to do on their own? Do you want students to see everyone's answers live? It's just in poll deck, and I'm sorry, in poll everywhere. You saw all the answers uh, as people were making the answers. Uh, as opposed to me deciding what I'm going to show them. Do you want to lock the answers so that students can't answer any more? Do you want to see individual responses afterwards so you know, well, what did Sue say, and what did Katie say, and what did Dr. Z say? Um, uh, there's reasons for that. You may want an amount of a survey, for instance, because you want students to feel more free about opening up. Um, and third, know in advance why you're asking a question. So I mentioned this before, you know, what's the point of doing this? You want students to know how the class answered. Maybe you want them to see. Maybe you don't want them to see it because you don't want that to factor into their individual answer. Do you want to modify your lesson based on the answer to the question? Like earlier, how I mentioned how I wanted to kind of shape our discussion today based off of some of the answers you guys gave. Did you want to use the information after the lesson? So, you know, for Schoology, we're already grades the assignment. Now you have that information. You see what students did uh, on each question right away. Um, you know, some of those programs will, will be a lot more forthcoming in that information. Fourth, uh, use the student answers to create a discussion. Uh, a couple of sample questions that you can throw out. Why did you choose this? Uh, someone ch that chose this, why did you choose that one as opposed to something else? Uh, X is the correct answer. Can you explain why that's the correct answer? Or, you know, X is not correct, but I want to know you're thinking about that. Because again, um, with formative assessment, when you're doing in the middle of a lesson, when you're asking those questions, you're getting, uh, you're really trying to help students understand and think a little bit more deeply. So if you're just throwing out a question and you're not following it up with something else, um, you know, to generate some type of discussion, then unless you really want that information for yourself, uh, it's really not gonna go too far in terms of, of supporting your learning. And uh, with live learning, you really wanna focus on getting others to talk. But with asynchronous learning, you wanna focus on making the, the lesson interesting. And just a quick note, if you're using video within it, uh, six minutes is about how long we can manage to stay engaged before we start to get bored. Uh, and that's just on, uh, on average. That doesn't include for, for elementary, middle school, high school students. So you think about this, if you throw out a video and um, as a part of your lesson, and now you want students to answer questions after it, you know, six minutes is a long time for them to watch a video and then try to answer questions. So, um, uh, you know, that may be difficult if you're doing asynchronous learning if your video is too long. We are going to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, uh, we're going to switch gears. And instead of using Poll Everywhere, we're going to use the other program uh, that I'm going to mention just to show you some other features. So I'm going to ask you to go to joinpd.com. Other browser, if you go to joinpd.com, 
you, it'll look like this. You're going to enter a code. And once I start this uh, presentation, you'll see that code. It's going to take one second as we switch gears. So it's joinpd.com. Uh, the great thing about this is that uh, if you have your students uh, using Google or I think Microsoft, you can automatically have them log in using their login, and that way uh, it'll record their names as all of the answers. So the five-digit code I'm going to ask you at joinpd.com is JQTAV or Juicy Quizzes Turn Acidic Viewable. Don't ask me how they got that. I'm not sure how they did, but uh, they have. Um, words to go with each letter, so that way it helps students to remember what, um, uh, what letter you're talking about. So juicy quizzes turn acidic violas. And by the way, just with a program like Care Deck, for instance, you tell us also with Poll Everywhere, uh, once you don't have that, that um, uh, intro up there, you'll notice that in the top right, you can still see the code. So if you're familiar with Care Deck, you have students that are coming in and you're in the middle of a Care Deck lesson, and they have that code, they can be able to just log in. And I can always bring that code back up. I got 19 of you on. That's great. Uh, I am going to go back and flip through my slides here. What is the code? What is the code? The code is JQTAV or Juicy Quizzes Turn Acidic Violas. So I talked a little bit about um, uh, you know, some of the questions that you have on there as well as when and how to use those questions. I'm uh, going to give a couple of examples real quick. So in Pear Deck, uh, one of the things that you can be able to do is you can be able to draw. So I'm going to ask you to draw real quick. See if you can find the word add-ons, and I want you to circle it. So one of you, three of you found it so far. See if you can find the word add-ons, and I want you to circle it. And I'll show you what it looks like once you find it. So one of the great things about this is that right now, you don't see the results live. So I'm throwing this out to the 20 of you that are on, and right now you can't see what everybody else said, so you can't answer the same question. So multiple choice, for instance, uh, if the answer was really D, and most students started answering D, and it was live, then that might alter, well, do I answer D2? But I might not really know why I picked D. So uh, this way, you can be able to throw out a question, and, not, and the students won't be able to see the answer. Uh, so it's same for, for an audience, if you have an audience, if you're doing a presentation. So obviously, the answer for add-ons is right up here. But to show you what it looks like, I can now scroll and see all the, the uh, uh, see what everybody's answer was. I was trying to find it. Some of you found it. It's in the top in the, top in the middle. That's where I found it. Okay. <laughs> someone, someone found the other word for add-ons, the other add-ons in there, which is obviously uh, right in front of you. So add-ons here and add-ons there. But now you can see what everybody answered. So as I go through it, when I see, well, someone didn't quite get it. So whoever this student is here, um, and in the teacher view, I would see who that student is. I would say, well, this student didn't get that answer. So we might want to check on that. So um, and in fact, I'm also going to lock the screens. When I lock it, now you can go ahead and try to change your answer, but you can't. So that's the cool thing about it. Is I can now lock it and say, now I'm going to show you the responses of what everybody got. And if you didn't answer by that point, now I know you didn't answer. And it could be for different reasons. Maybe they didn't know the answer. Maybe they were distracted. Maybe they just didn't want to get it wrong. Uh, but then you can be able to explore how you want to handle it from there. So I'm going to unlock the screens, and I'm just on the same one. You can go change your answer now, and I want you to find poll everywhere. See if you can find poll everywhere. Circle that as well, or you can box it in or highlight it, whatever you want to do. The reason I want you to make sure that you note that, um, and if you, weren't, if you were paying attention, you probably would have noticed I just gave it away, but uh, see if you can find poll everywhere. And yes, Poll Everywhere is in the top, right up here next to the add-ons. Uh, once you've added on Poll Everywhere or Pear Deck, this is where you're going to find it. And the same thing with um, any of the other programs that integrate with Google Slides, such as Slido. So again, uh, add-ons and the, and the Poll Everywhere link up here, that's where I'm going to focus on. 
And in fact, uh, when I'm in Google Slides, once I've added and I paired that to Google Slides, it's really easy to find this right here, and there's an add-on. And the great thing about this is, once, I, once that add-on is open, and I'll show you what it looks like, you can throw out any of these types of questions in Pear Deck, text, choice, number, website, draggable, drawing, uh, or you can use the template library and see what types of templates that they have. And you can easily drag and drop one of those templates in. Except I didn't want to do that. Um, with Poll Everywhere, same idea. Uh, once you've added that into Google Slides, once you click on that, you can actually create a new poll. And I'm going to throw out a question right now. Um, I'll just make this open-ended. Let's see, what questions do you have so far? So if I was to throw that in poll deck, uh, I'm sorry, yes, and I'm getting my, my programs confused. Uh, poll everywhere, all I have to do is I can just find the type of uh, uh, answer that I want, or the type of question I want, and then just create it, and it goes right into your, your presentation. Unfortunately, what I did do is I think I ended, did I end that? Yes, I did. I ended it, unfortunately. Um, uh, so we're going to go back into this. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, there's a teacher view. I mentioned to throw the teacher view out. Um, with the teacher view in Pear Deck, and give me one second, I'll, I'll um, throw this back up here. It'll have a new code on there, but that's okay. We won't do any more questions right now. Um, but when you look at the teacher view, and take a second for it to come up, you can actually see the names of the responses. You can also save the, um, the program or save the, the presentation. So if you have five classes and you're using the exact same um, program or uh, same lesson, you can be able to um, see everybody's responses and save them for later. And if you log directly into Pear Deck, you can go back in and see exactly which ones are which. So uh, it'll take a second for this to pull back up. Pear Deck doesn't really like me today. All right, so since I can't pull that up, just so you know, there is a teacher dashboard. You can be able to save it. And so that way, if you say, you know, I don't remember all of the, um, the uh, uh, how everybody answered, you can actually get uh, everybody's individual answers to that, um, and that way you have it saved for later. So I'm going to ask real quick, um, and you can actually just throw this out, you don't have to answer it in Pear Deck. What questions do you have so far about using interactive presentations? Went through a lot already uh, about some of the diff a couple of different tools and about how you can use them, but what questions do you have so far that I haven't answered? Anybody I have, have any? a question in the discussion in the group chat, um, asking okay. about using two devices. So you've asked us to use one device for Zoom and one device for the formative assessment. What happens, what complications might that arise in a school setting? Okay, and that's a great question. So again, it's gonna depend on whether you're using live learning or whether you're doing a recording, for instance. If you're doing something that's live, um, uh, first of all, if you have students that have a device, our district has one-to-one, -one, so uh, they have Chromebooks, so you can easily just open another tab and then use it that way. For your younger students, that may cause an issue. Um, uh, if you are also, if you're running this asynchronously or you're giving them the lesson, you can actually, uh, for instance, with Pear Deck and with Pear, give them the link to the, the lesson and they can go through the lesson on their own and not have to be able to say, to say live with you. So if you're running into that issue where you have students that can't handle toggling back and forth between two, two different things, or you have students that don't have, uh, let's say they're just working from their phone, for instance, which might be very difficult to do, then I would consider doing something that's uh, asynchronous, throw out a, um, uh, you know, throwing out the presentation or the video and, uh, just using the one, um, uh, the one program instead of using Zoom and that. Uh, now, I think with Slido, and I haven't really explored this yet, but this is something that you may want to if you are good with Zoom. So if you like using Zoom, your district allows you to use Zoom. Slido does have this integration with Zoom. 
I don't know how that works because our district doesn't use Zoom and uh, uh, I haven't really checked into that. So uh, again, you can make sure that you, um, uh, you can check that out. I see that might work for you as an alternate. Um, uh, Sue said you had a different tab open. It's a lot easier than using your phone. And I think a lot of that's gonna depend too on how comfortable you are with your device and with your phone. Um, I can't tell you how many times that it, it's, I've actually had to explain to students how to open a new tab up, um, even though they're in high school and I would have thought they would have known that. Um, but you have some students that have issues with their phone. So uh, as far as the question about a copy of the presentation, um, uh, yes, I know this is a lot to go through today. So I did set this up and at the end I'll give you the direct link and you can keep it. Uh, actually, I'll put it in here for you now. Bill, while you're doing that, I was just going to mention those that are using Zoom, there is a poll option in Zoom, but it only allows you to select an answer, either a single answer or multiple answers. It doesn't really give a lot of data. It might be a kind of a quick, you know, down and dirty quick thing asking students while they're in the Zoom, but it doesn't do as much as any of the tools that you're talking about. Okay, and you know, that's good to know too, because sometimes you just need to throw out a quick question and you don't, you don't need to make it anything big. Um, and so if you just need to throw out a quick question to see you know, uh, how many students were able to watch the video last night or how many students uh, you just wanted to find out, you know, were you able to, to get rest over the break? Maybe you just want something silly just to, uh, or, or something that's really easy just to get people to interact. Um, that's a, a perfect way to use that. That way you're not doing something separate just for the sake of it. Um, so thinking about you know, when do you wanna use Zoom or, or uh, Schoology or any of the programs that have really quick assessments versus some of these tools where you can do a lot more, but they're gonna take some more work. Uh, so real quick, and again, I, I closed the, the Paradise presentation, so uh, just wanna know, anybody here use Flipgrid? We'll gonna talk about Flipgrid in a minute. Um, uh, Flipgrid, uh, so I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, we're gonna switch now to talking about interactive video. And the reason that interactive video is gonna be a lot different in terms of engagement is that you're actually getting students to engage either by creating video or by answering questions within a video. And so there's the, the two different sets of programs here. Flipgrid is uh, actually pretty easy to use. Once you get the hang of it, it's completely free. So there's no freemium version. You don't have to pay extra to do certain things. Easy to log in and students can respond to questions with a video. So instead of saying, I want, I'm gonna throw this out, I want you to write two paragraphs about uh, why did, how did World War I start? You could actually say, I want you to actually respond with video and I want you to tell me in your words about how World War I began. And so you can have students respond that way. Uh, it can be silly questions, it can be funny questions, it can be uh, tough questions. And the cool thing with this too is there are some other options. They can put emojis or sunglasses or items on their faces to kind of decorate it up. They can choose whether to make it audio and not, not be seen. Um, and what I just found out about this, and I didn't know about this till last night, there's actually a whiteboard mode. So this is great with math problems, for instance. So if you want to see how a student came up with an answer, now you can actually have them respond on video using the whiteboard mode in order to be able to show how they got, how they made the answer that, or um, came up with the answer that they did. So as opposed to that just now, especially with remote learning, you, you're not always being able to see, well, how does Scott be able to come up with this answer you can do that with Flipgrid because they can respond, show you how they came up with it, and you, now you can work with them and get those answers one-on-one. -on -one. When we are able to go back to school, the great, way, uh, great thing you can do with this, you can be able to use this with homework as opposed to in school, and that way as they're working through a homework ass assignment, there's a really tough question, you wanna see how they got the answer they did, you can actually hear them talk about how they walk, uh, walk through the program and not just see it on the homework that they turn in. Now the other types of videos that you have, um, Play Posit and Ed Edpuzzle are two very similar programs where you can actually be able to take a video or use a video you created and introduce and embed questions inside of it. And as you can see, both of them are premium and they have uh, a free version, but you can also pay uh, uh, more if you wanna be able to use those other versions. I don't think either of them have a, a, a very long free trial right now. Uh, but just so you can see what this looks like, so you have a video that's happening here, and the video will stop, you'll have questions that they'll be able to answer before you can go on. Um, 
you can have the ability for students to comment about a video as they go through it. So if somebody says, I didn't really understand what they meant there, they could actually chime in at that point of the video so you could see it, or they could throw out a question to you about what they heard or what they saw. I'm not going to get in too much into the differences between the two of them, uh, but again, if you're downloading this presentation later and you want to see, well, what can I do with Edpuzzle that I can't with Playposit and vice versa, uh, I have these two charts for you to be able to take a look at. Uh, so that way you can tell, well, what's, what's the difference between these programs? Why might I want to use one or the other? For instance, uh, if your district has MacBooks, um, uh, you know, they can't uh, 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 use Playposit because that's strictly through Chrome. So you want to think about what you, what you can be able to do with each program. Um, uh, and just thinking about, just going back to the, these uh, interactive videos, uh, again, keep those videos, the videos that you use, try to keep it short. Um, you know, you don't want to, to, you don't want to be too long and you don't want to have too long between a question you want them to answer because you want them to stay engaged throughout it. You also don't want to make question heavy and to the point where the whole point of the video kind of gets lost in all the questioning. Um, uh, so thinking about that, uh, for those of you that have created videos, if you created a video lesson that you've shared with your students, you could actually be able to create that video with, let's say, Loom, Screencastify, upload that video to one of these two programs, and now you can integrate those questions in the middle of that video uh, as opposed to questions just at the end. Uh, so I mentioned at the beginning of this that there are some quizzes and games. This is the third category of formative assessment tools. Uh, such as Kahoot, Quizzes, Socrative, Answerpad. Uh, there's a lot of different tools that you can use in terms of assessing at the end of the lesson. Um, and I'm sure you've probably heard about some of these. I had just found out about Answerpad last night, which might be a great way for, uh, to demonstrate math problems. Uh, so I'm going to look a little bit more into that and share that with our math teachers, possibly. Um, I'm not really going to get into that because they're basically a little more straightforward. You have some type of either quiz or a game that you throw out questions to, and then and to be able to answer it. So when you're thinking about your formative assessment tools, this would happen at the end of a lesson. Might be uh, you might even use it as an exit ticket to be able to see what they learned about a lesson. But this isn't going to integrate with your lesson or as a part of your presentation, just like the tools that I shared today. Um, uh, last, I'm going to mention real quick. These next three slides, I'm not going to get into. But I set this up so that those of you that want to go and take a look later say, you know what, I really wanted to learn a little bit more about um, um, Mentimeter. Because, you know, Bill, you really didn't discuss Mentimeter. I want to check in with that. So I tried to put a couple of videos up. Uh, these are all links to YouTube videos that have either an introduction, it shows you the student version, so you see what that's like, um, or see, you can see some types of engagement in the classroom, how it, it works, it integrates. So hopefully you're going to find uh, this is a little bit helpful. Um, because again, I'm throwing out a lot of different things to think about. Uh, I, you're probably, uh, you might be overwhelmed or might just say, well, it was just a lot to take in today. And that's okay. You can actually go back and take a look at all of this later. Uh, and if you, in case you missed it, the link for uh, today's presentation is at uh, bit.ly slash NJCU formative. And that, so that'll take you directly to the um, PowerPoint. And all the links are available in that PowerPoint too. So when you go back in through, uh, you won't see all of the poll results. So you won't see how many people said uh, they wanted to learn more about EdTech tools, for instance. But all of the live links are on there. You can actually go directly to uh, to those. to share that as well. All right, so um, uh, that's pretty much all I have today. I wanted to give some time at the end in case you guys had some specific questions, whether it's about using formative assessment or whether it's about, um, uh, whether it's about using any of these particular tech tools. Uh, and that link I'll put up, up one more time. It's a LY slash NJCU formative. Did anybody have any questions today? I don't see it. Oops, sorry. Oh, you know what? I just, that, that's because I sent it back to uh, Dr. Deer. Uh, one more second. I'll post it again. 
right, so how do we best support our teachers as they practice uh, with some of these tools? So what I've done in the past uh, three or four weeks, uh, first, even though I'm working strictly at our high school, um, uh, I've had the ability to work within the district and support other teachers throughout the district. I don't know exactly what your role is, uh, but what I found is um, I, I threw out a Google form survey and said, you know, these are some of the things that, that, um, uh, that are out there. What do you want to know? So rather than saying, we want you to know this and we want you to know this, they, the only big things we wanted to make sure teachers knew was Google Meet and Google Classroom. Because you have teachers that are uh, Flintstone era that we're trying to drag into the 21st century, and you have some that are way beyond. So rather than trying to mandate that everybody get the same PD or the same instruction, the same assistance, uh, we threw it out there and said, what do you want to know? I had about 70 teachers throughout the district come back and, um, and say they wanted to learn more about, um, you know, some of the intricate parts of Google Classroom, or they wanted to know how to best use video, how to create video. So uh, once I found out what they wanted to do, I set up time for them to come in, and basically, just like I'm doing now, um, I, I would go through some of the basics with them, but I spent a lot of time actually listening, answering, uh, asking some questions, trying to figure out what they really needed. Um, uh, and I spent a lot of time in those sessions coaching them with doing something. So uh, even though I didn't leave the flip group when I had a teacher at school do that for the district, they actually spent time and threw it out and said, hey, you know, we want you to actually do a flip print so you see this from the kid's side. Um, and what I found is that a lot of the teachers really needed to just to know that someone was supporting them. They needed to know that, um, um, uh, they just needed to, they, not only could they play with it, but they had someone there to support them while they were playing with it. And then I followed up and said, hey, I'm available over the break. If you have a question, email me. I'm, uh, you know, if you want to do a separate session, I'm not just, I'm, I might be working at the high school, but my job is to support everybody. Um, uh, and, and just to go back, Keen, to what you were saying, uh, absolutely, set up a, a session and allow them to play with it. So even if it's just an hour long, uh, Google Meet or a Zoom where you say, hey, you know, if you want support, I'm here. I'm going to focus on uh, using Pear Deck. And if you want to learn how to Pear Deck, use Pear Deck, I'll show you. And then you can set it up, and I'll be here so that way you can share your screen and I can work with you. Um, you know, so those types of sessions where they know, hey, I'm here. I'm willing to support. Uh, I'm willing to uh, uh, try to help you with it. And just for them to also have that reminder, you don't have to make it fancy. You don't have to try to do all these fancy things with it, just trying to make sure, get something that you're uh, kind of get a handle of it and get comfortable with it. And I think once they know that you, uh, you're willing to support them and, uh, and can be able to help them with some of the questions they have, I think they'll, just the comfort itself is going to make things a lot, of easy, a lot easier. Um, any other questions that you have? And Jean, did that help out or did you have, uh, did you have further questions? You can unmute yourself and feel free to ask and chime in more. I don't want to get you too much feedback. No, this has been good. We have um, tech support people at each level in our district and they have open office hours. I just know how overwhelmed they are as they have brought 900 staff on board with online. And I'm trying not to overwhelm my teachers, but they're asking for ways to interact um, better than just doing chat rooms or conferences with their students. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing that's really helped with us, too, um, and granted, we didn't do this in reaction to the, the coronavirus. We had actually done this beforehand. Uh, what we did was we did, um, we had set up this ed tech team. And uh, as a part of this team, I'm actually not running it, even though I'm the, the tech administrator in the building. I'm the, the person in charge of the technology program. Um, I have two teachers that are really strong with technology, and I have another four teachers that are willing to help and go along and support. So six total teachers at about 70 in the high school, and uh, they've all taken different, uh, different programs that we use, um, that we have integrated with it, whether it's Cengage or Pear Deck or, or um, Google Classroom. And so they've made themselves available to our staff, and they've done some of the sessions. They've, they've had the open office hours, um, but their focus has been on the, the instructional aspect so that our tech people can deal with the technology aspect. Because um, to be honest, a lot of the tech people don't really know instruction. And that's your issue. Like you have the tech people trying to do this and the, the, um, and the teachers trying to do this and nobody really understands they can't really communicate. So um, having the ed tech team helps them deal with the instructional aspect and then they can also communicate the tech issues with the technology department. Any other questions today? 
Everybody's so quiet. <laughs> well, Phil, I think, um, I don't think they're overloaded, but I think they have a lot to think about, <laughs> which yes. is great. Excellent. Um, better to have more than less. You know, we can pick and choose the things that are interesting and, and productive and explore more about it. And I thank you so much for giving us this information and doing the webinar for us. Um, if there are any other questions, we are going to post um, the information that you saw here today, the presentation um, on our website. So please, it was in the chat. If you need it again, I'm sure Samantha can pop it up there again. And um, you can see all of the presentations that we've been doing. So if you'd like to go back and go through any of the information, and you're always welcome to um, email me if you'd like to connect with any of our presenters or with anyone here. Um, I'm putting my email address in the chat. So it's there if you'd like to contact me. I'm always online 24 <laughs> seven. So anyway, um, thank you so much again, Philip. It was wonderful and I hope everybody has a great day and I'll hopefully see you all at three o'clock. Thank you, right, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. All right, have a good day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.